We will talk about the ongoing appeal of Ripple v. SEC in this video. With more deadlines approaching, the situation is taking longer than it should. Brad Gollinghouse added, Hey, Ripple made a big mistake in their Ripple v. SEC lawsuit. Don't worry, I got you covered. Stuart Alderati then made some really strong remarks, saying, We're going to look at what Microsoft's about to do with Bitcoin. Therefore, please take a seat, unwind, and sip on a nice beverage before exploring the Bitcoin market. Bitcoin has increased by 1.05% during the past day to $67,875. Ethereum has increased by 36% and is now trading at $2,537. While XRP, which is now only worth 52.5 cents, has dropped 33%, USDT and USDC have both kept their dollar pegs. Now that the market value of all cryptocurrencies is $2,335,000,000, what should we do? Although it appears like we are aiming for $2.5 trillion, keep in mind that, as I indicated in today's first video, there is still a chance that Bitcoin will decline, so keep a watch on it. The invalidation point, which indicates that the decline is unlikely to occur, is $74,000. We highly recommend that you visit CryptoMinute.com if you haven't already. You can find all of your cryptocurrency news, spanning the whole market, in one location. There have been reports of analyst attacks, an abnormality in the price of XRP, and some traders who are taking precautions by aiming for a 2000x run. Isn't it an intriguing headline? However, I will warn you now that this piece is clickbait, they publish such papers for a reason, to attract your attention and encourage you to click on the post. Here's what XRP holders do after clicking on something similar, and you'll likely notice the same pattern on Twitter. Don't be deceived by their bullish headline, as soon as you start reading, they start promoting a shitcoin or fraud. We refer to this as clickbaiting 101. Cointelegraph claims that Bitcoin's value will always rise. Former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan is making these remarks. Since Bitcoin's value can never be negative, there is only one possible value, either zero or plus. Given how people calculate value, there will be several people who always view it favorably, and if you happen to be Bitcoin and invest in it early on, you open up a sizable potential market. The fact that almost all cryptocurrencies, which have some control and precise mathematical computations, are doing fairly well, however, is not a coincidence. It's crucial to remember that Bitcoin was derided when it first appeared, it was worth only $1 at the time, but now it is worth over $66,000. That's what occurs when the rate of change begins to slow down and you have a real asset and a real use case. A lot of people are laughing at XRP instead of Bitcoin these days. Give XRP some time, then. I am aware that XRP has not done much in my time there and that it has been out of the market for a long time, but it has made substantial gains since 2013. Even though I bought XRP at about 20 cents, I know that 99.9% .9 of us didn't buy it when it was valued at less than a penny. The argument is that, just as Bitcoin went from $1 to $66,000, there is no reason why XRP can't go from $0.20 cents to $6 or even to double digits, particularly through 2025. Now that a large section of this case is over and XRP has been given security clearance in the US, we are excitedly awaiting this decision. As financial institutions start investing in cryptocurrency markets and exchange-traded funds, ETFs, they will prioritize assets with transparency. They are certain of these assets' investing potential and are aware of their nature. Since the SEC is still unpredictable, they don't have to be concerned about the possibility of an attack on a certain cryptocurrency the next day. Before it's too late, we never know what the SEC will do. You've seen what occurred with XRP when it's too late. The price of XRP was around $1.90 in 2020 when the lawsuit was dismissed. It was anticipated to keep increasing and probably retest the record high set in 2017. Yes, I rode the wave that caused the price to plummet to 17 cents without selling a single XRP when the lawsuit was revealed. I succeeded. 
However, since the difficult phase is over, 2025 will be different. We then need to think about the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit. We have learned that the SEC government has asked for an extension to the January 15th deadline for its filing and major briefs. I think January 1st was the initial date. This thing is presently being pushed out. Look, this appeal is pointless, it may be postponed or pushed out, but it makes no difference, the case's decisions are being appealed, and we won't miss the bull run. This is not how it works, simply because there is an appeal does not convert the rulings, which are all in favor of Ripple, to a neutral position at this point. It is like a coin flip that is still up in the air. As I have said before, you are still a robber even if you are convicted of a crime and go to jail. You are still liable for the conviction even if you appeal and say you had nothing to do with the heist. To overturn the verdict, you must win your appeal if the court hears it and grants it. You remain a thief as the appeal goes on. Throughout the litigation and the ongoing appeal, Ripple has prevailed in every way. The judge must be persuaded to modify her mind by the SEC. Stuart Alberati claims that Ripple filed its Form C, outlining the points we intend to bring up in our cross-appeal. Therefore, I don't think the judge will modify her mind. As we move forward, let's keep a couple of things in mind. The question of whether XRP is a security in and of itself is not an issue in this instance. Because it is transparent and does not have a security classification, XRP differs from Bitcoin. There is no disputing this reality and never will be. Since that decision is still the accepted legal norm, the SEC is not challenging it. The established record is examined by the appeals court and ours is a very good one. This prevents the theatrics that typified our litigation over document disputes by prohibiting the SEC from presenting fresh evidence or asking us for more. Please keep in mind the SEC's overarching plan as we proceed to try to divert attention and cause confusion for Ripple and the sector. But really, for the time being, it's just background noise. We have overcome the challenging portion of the battle. Even as this appeal procedure is ongoing, Ripple's business is expanding and becoming stronger every day. At last, Ripple can function normally. Ripple has been unable to function normally since the lawsuit was dropped in 2020 and was resolved earlier this year. They can now function as a typical business, keep moving forward, expand, and be adopted in the U.S. I want to let you know that this cross-appeal seems to be costing the SEC a lot of money. To prevent losing everything in the cryptocurrency market, is it worthwhile to postpone Ripple for a year or two? However, XRP has made a name for itself as a non-security. Thus, the SEC's opportunities are restricted. It is extremely constrained. The SEC will only gain from this if it can restrict the possible impact of Ripple on sales and programmatic secondary markets, or if it can enhance its funding. That's all. That's it. Nonetheless, the SEC must prove that they have at least one successful case to their name. Because of their unblemished record, they will be able to claim that they have adopted a pro-crypto stance safely, had a good impact on the crypto industry, and successfully curbed bad actors. In other words, it has been defeated, and four times. The evaluation of Bitcoin investment will be put to a vote by Microsoft at the shareholder meetings on December 10th. This is significant. I have been pushing for institutional adoption for the past nine months, and this could be the first step. In just over a month, Microsoft will cast its vote on whether to invest in Bitcoin. Keep in mind that Bitcoin is the first asset that the institutions will look at when they join the market. XRP will be the second asset they look at. Why is this the case? For what reason are they ignoring Ethereum? No, it's really easy. Determining Ethereum's status as a security is challenging due to its ambiguity and lack of SEC approval. As a result, its state is still unknown. It will therefore be jumped over and skipped. The decision that XRP is not a security in the Ripple v. SEC case is crucial because of this. The CEO, Brad Gollinghouse, then explains why he believes Ripple made a mistake with the SEC. He continues, I look back on that and I regret that. 
We're attempting to make up for lost time partially, and I believe we made a mistake by not leaning in earlier. In essence, he is arguing that they ought to have challenged the SEC. They ought not to have reclined. Even though the SEC was ready to approach them, they shouldn't have waited for it to happen. They would have greatly improved their position if they had acted sooner or demanded answers. Instead, they lost a few years in the United States. But Stewart recently told us that they are now regaining the time they lost. They're going forward. People, they're getting bigger, better, and more powerful right now. Security is not what XRP is. Keep it in mind. It won't be. There is no question about it.